شهر الخير والغفران رمضان 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 May your Ramadan nights be blessed with welfare and forgiveness May your Ramadan nights be blessed with welfare and forgiveness May your Ramadan nights be blessed with welfare and forgiveness May your Ramadan nights be blessed with welfare and forgiveness Ramadan 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 Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to blessed nights may Allah make all your nights blessed Ameen hope you enjoy your Ramadan hope you uh, have finished already the recitation of the Quran more than once uh, tonight is supposed to be the 20th night so brothers and sisters we're approaching the last one third of the month of Ramadan and we need to pay a lot uh, very close attention to what we have to do during this one third Inshallah, Azzajal, tonight we'll be discussing the 20th part of the Qur'an, beginning by Surah An-Naml, verse number 56. فَمَا كَانَ جَوَابَ قَوْمِهِ إِلَّا أَنْ قَالُوا أَخْرِجُوا آلَ لُوطٍ مِنْ قَرْيَتِكُمْ إِنَّهُمْ أُنَاسٌ يَتَطَهْرُونَ But before that, I would like to welcome our studio guest, Sheikh Ibrahim Zidan and Sheikh Saeed Al-Qadi. Thank you so for joining us. Barak Allah fikum. Rizakum Allah khayram. After praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending the best peace and blessings upon his Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Sheikh Ibrahim, uh, there are some very, very important verses from verse number 60 through verse number 64. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is presenting some rhetorical questions for a reason, of course, very important reason. The first question is in verse number 60. He's asking, أَمَّنْ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ وَأَنزَلَ لَكُمْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءً فَأَنْبَتْنَا بِهِ حَدَائِقَ ذَاتَ بَهْجَةٍ مَا كَانَ لَكُمْ أَنْ تُنْبِتُوا شَجَرَهَا Then a confirmation of the rhetorical question which is أَإِلَاهٌ مَعَ اللَّهِ Who is the one who created the heavens and earth and sent down water from the heavens produced with it gardens and uh, the trees in these gardens, no way that you could have produced them by yourselves. Ilahum Allah. Are there any God besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do you still think so? Belhum Kaumun Ya'dilun. They still equate others to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in worship. While those who whom they equate to Allah or worship along with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot do any of the above. So uh, let's comment on this verse first, Sheikh Ibrahim, and we'll go through the rest of the verses. Now, this set of verses is talking about the same thing, which is, as we mentioned it before, and we see it many places in the Quran, where the rububiyya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that He is the Rabb, the Lord, the Creator, the Sustainer, and reminding people of the creation of Allah. And then the question is, Ilahum ma Allah. Not a Rabbum ma'ar Rabbi subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because most of the human beings that believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator, the sustainer. Mm. But the question is, is there anyone worthy of worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? None. The answer should be none. Mm. And whoever says otherwise, he's saying or she's saying that out of arrogance or out of being uh, deceiving their own selves. And that's why this is the hujja, the evidence in I the religion of Islam. I that you did not say or out of arrogance because after... Right. The proclamation in the verse, it has mm -hmm. been made clear. Very clear. Okay? So uh, he's asking these questions in order to bring to the attention of the audience mm -hmm. that if, if somebody, for instance, mm -hmm. um, lost a very valuable watch, Rolex watch, with a serial number, of course, mm -hmm. and somebody found it. So when he says, who lost a watch? He does not say, what kind of watch is it? Mm. masculine or feminine, Rolex or whatever. He does not say the brand or any description. Then four or five people show up and say, it's my watch. Then he has to be uh, tricky or smart and ask everybody if you can provide the description of this uh, watch. And whoever will bring the exact description, then the watch is his. So five or 20 or 200 or 2 million people showed up and said, each and every one of them said, it's mine. 
but only one person was able to provide the exact description of the loss in property and the serial number. Would we still have any doubt that the watch belongs to this person? No, of course not. No doubt, the watch no. is his. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala treats us with simplicity and He explains to us in details how He created the universe, how He created us from the very beginning, from dust, then how He breathed the soul into us, then how He creates the offspring of Adam alayhi salam and tells us about the, the unseen, what happens in the womb, the zygote and the embryo and all of that just in the 19th century, people started to have uh, grasp some knowledge of how does this all happen. And that's mm -hmm. why many Orientalists and many scholars, scientists have accepted Islam due to the fact that they thought, well, we now know it all. And when they came to find out that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressed all of that more than 1400 years ago, they couldn't but submit to mm -hmm. the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and become Muslims. So. He's addressing the highly intellectual people and he's addressing the average people. Who has created the heavens and the earth? Who sent down the water rain? Who's, who produced the fruits and vegetations? Do you still think that there is Ilah Ma'Allah? There's only one who claim that he is the one who uh, has done all of that. That is Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. Somebody will say no, but there are others who claim so, okay, name them, the Pharaoh, and where is the Pharaoh now? The Pharaoh said to Musa and to his people, وَهَذِهِ الْأَنْهَارُ تَجْرِ مِنْ تَحْتِ He thought that he, he's, he's, he's God because he said, أَلَيْسَ لِي مُلْكُ مِصْرَ وَهَذِهِ الْأَنْهَارُ تَجْرِ مِنْ تَحْتِ Don't I own Egypt, the dominion of Egypt is mine, I'm the king. And you see, I have rivers flowing beneath me. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the rivers or the water run on top of him. Right. After it was running beneath him, when he was round, the Namrud, who argued with uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam, and he said, Ibrahim alayhi salam says, Rabbi alladhi yuhyi wa yumit, my Lord is the one who gives life and death. He says, I too give life and death. Oh. And he frees a prisoner who is about to be executed. He says, I give him life. Oh. And he brings an innocent person and he executes him. He says, look, and I cause death. So Ibrahim alayhi salam says, well, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْتِي بِالشَّمْسِ مِنَ الْمَشْرِقِ فَأْتِ بِهَا مِنَ الْمَغْرِبِ فَوِيتَ الَّذِي كَفْرِ Allah, my Lord, is the one who brings the sun every day from the east. You bring it once from the west. Hmm. And accordingly, the disbeliever was utterly defeated. And we know how his fate and how he ended up. His fate hmm. was that when a fly entered his nose and settled in his brain, and uh, he would not settle down until they beat him over his head with the shoes. Is this a person who claim one day to be God? Mm -hmm. So when there is only one presents the proofs, sends the prophets, and send down the revelations, and shows the miracles, and said, I am the only Ilah, I'm the creator, then no one has an excuse afterward. Mm -hmm. The second verse, 61, in this regard, mm -hmm. the other question. أَمَّنْ جَعَلَ الْأَرْضَ قَرَارًا وَجَعَلَ خِلَالَهَا أَنْهَارًا وَجَعَلَ لَهَا رَوَاسِيَ The mountains. وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَ الْبَحْرَيْنِ حَاجِزًا And he put an unseen barrier, barrier. between the two seas. Not physical. Mm. Barrier between the salt and, and the, the fresh water. Mm. There is no physical barrier. But the two waters never mingle. Subhanallah. And I've been there. Subhanallah. The Red Sea has a connection to uh, the river somewhere. And you get water from here, that's salty, and water from there, and you're standing in the middle of the water, and it is fresh. There is no physical barrier. Then the question is delivered. أَإِلَاهُمْ مَعَ اللَّهِ But there is still إِلَاه along with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. بَلْ أَكْثَرُهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Nay, most of them know not. What does it mean, know not, know what? Don't know about Allah's creation. Don't know about what Allah Ta'ala has placed in this uh, universe. Uh, the verse begins with saying, أَمَّنْ جَعَلْ أَرْضَ قَرَارًا The one who has made this uh, earth to seem that it is stable mm. to us. 
we as human beings, we, we, we see the earth as something which is stable in our, uh, in our, in, in, in our, in our feeling. Mm-hmm. Yeah? But it is, it's moving as well. As Allah Ta'ala in the Quran mentioned, everything is moving in orbit. All the planets are uh, running over, has been set for them. Uh, it is it is qarara in, 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 in the way how we can see it, uh, how we can feel it. It is qarara. But at the same time, it is moving. Uh, he, he made, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he made these rivers which in, from which we can uh, agriculture, we can drink, we can uh, benefit from. وجعل لها وجعل وجعل لها رواسي. The mountains. The mountains. رواسي in Arabic means that it is like the 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 uh, the pegs. Uh, pegs for the for the tent, pegs. isn't yeah. it? Yeah. That, that, that is that stable the tent. Hmm. And these uh, mountains are stable in the whole earth. Hmm. And now the the the, the scientists, scientists said geologists ge- geologists they said um, we found that the, what we ca- what we see from the mountain is only the third of it. And there is two thirds inside the earth, mm-hmm. uh, and if uh, if these mountains were not there, the the, the earth would have uh, have been stable, mm. would have uh, constant quakes. Subhanallah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Subhanallah. It is from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala His mission, all of these things, and people were not aware of all of these things, and it's just recently being discovered, mm. and that should. And mm-hmm. as you mentioned, there is hajj between the two. Uh, the fresh and the salt water a barrier oh. uh, to spread between them and no one knows all of these things until recently a few years ago subhanallah ta'ala or hundred years ago we were able to discover this but he sallam or this quran was revealed 1400 years ago and hmm. these facts were mentioned there when you see it it looks mixed but the composition of each one of them it stays as, there's no a transition uh, space in which it's in between the salty you and should the have mentioned that you're a physicist <laughs> 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 it's an immediate change like it's a salty water and all, with the density and everything and then all of a sudden it's totally different there's nothing in between as a transition it's an amazing creation of Allah that it's not to be seen with one's naked eye were they ever able to explain uh, why don't they mix uh, the reason I don't, I don't know any... There are several attempts, but mm. bottom line is, mm. okay, let's say that you guys have the reason and you know it all. Can you bring two flasks it's with different two flasks of water? No. Yes, with mm. two different densities. Salt and fresh, and put them in one container and see what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Can you do the same? Or even if we pick up a glass, if you, if you stand in the middle as I did, mm. okay, I took a handful of water from here and it tastes salty a handful from water, uh, water uh, from there, uh, the river, and it tasted fresh. What if I mix them together? Oh. They mix. Right. And uh, uh, the saltness of the salt water will be a little mild, oh. but it will not be entirely mild unless if you pour a lot of fresh water, oh. but they will mix, but there they do not mix. So that's a question that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has presented, and he says, uh, as yeah. a conclusion to that, are there any ilah along with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Uh, obviously, the word ilah is used in the context of the, uh, uh, the unity of worship. The unity of worship. But he brings the conclusion that if he's the creator, if he's the Lord, then he should be worshipped alone. The one who creates is the one who should be worshipped. It's worthy of worship. Exactly. So now the next one, everyone, even non-believers, sometimes at the, her, at the, the time of hardship, uh, when a plane is about to crash, when there is a warning, whatever, everybody says, oh my God, oh my God. And innocently, everybody looks up. Uh-huh. Oh my God, oh my God. Even atheists, uh, well, now you know there, there is God. أَمَّنْ يُجِيبُ الْمُطَّرَّ إِذَا دَعَاهُ وَيَكْشِفُ السُّوءَ Shaykh Ibrahim, أَإِلَهُمْ مَعَ اللَّهِ Please. The, when a person is in need, and that's what's in the nature of the human being, that because of the arrogance and the deceitful way of uh, life that people live in, people tend to forget. But once a person is in dire need, 
then this is the real nature comes out and that is to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and this is not just to non-Muslims but to Muslims we need to have this connection and to this to establish this act of worship that nobody can help us except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm -hmm. we do not need no one but the creator of the heavens and the earth alone uh, there's no saint there's no righteous person there's nobody in a grave can help us it's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the issue of al-tirar when a person is in a matter of life and death mm. how sincere is the dua when a person in the middle of the ocean and he's about to drown and he's making dua it is the most sincere dua right. he's not thinking about the helicopter to come or a ship to come he's sincerely wholeheartedly turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone this is how the state of our heart should be when we're making dua in the air conditioning yeah. in the haram in any place that need because without the help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are ruined. So we have to have that state of need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times, at times of ease, the same way when we do when we're in time of need. Well, as well, the last two verses, as I said, from 60 through 64, will be presenting these rhetorical questions. Uh, verse number 63 also uh, is asking, أَمَّنْ يَهْدِيكُمْ فِي ظُلُمَاتِ الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ وَمَنْ يُرْسِلُ الْرِيَاحَ بُشْرًا بَيْنَ يَدَيْ رَحْمَتِهِ Ilahum Allah, who is he who guides you in the darkness of the land and the sea and who sends the wind, the mild wind, because uh, the, 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 the Quran uh, uh, mentioned the wind in two different contexts. Al-Rih and Al-Riyah. Al-Riyah al The mild wind which brings mercy, pulling grains and the breeze. But Al-Riyah is used in the context of destruction. Uh, such as when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent arri, arri upon the people mm. of uh, Prophet Hud, Ad, mm. uh, for seven days and so, mm. in order to destroy them. So, وَمَنْ يُرْسِلُ الْرِيَاحَ بُشْرًا بَيْنَ يَدَيْ رَحْمَتِهِ When we see the mild wind, people rejoice. Mm. Why? Because it means it carries Mercy. the cloud towards us and the rain will fall and it will bring the bishara that it will water or irrigate the lands and the crops will grow and all of that. Ailahum ma Allah. He's the one who does all of that. Is there any ilah to be worshipped along with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Ta'ala Allahu amma yushrikun. Above Allah, all of what they associate with Him. Amman yabda'u al-khalqa thumma yu'iru. Or who is He who begins the creation? Then we'll re-bring the creation once again. وَمَنْ يَرْزُقُكُمْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ And who provides for you from the heavens and the earth. أَإِلَاهُمْ مَعَ اللَّهِ قُلْ هَاتُوا بُرْهَانَكُمْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ Say, bring your proof if you're telling the truth. As I said in the beginning, uh, many people claim that the watch is theirs. But there is only one who knows the exact description of the watch because it's his. And there is only one who created, there is only one who provides, there is only one who sustains, there is only one who gives love and death. And that's why when he gives the exact details of everything in a, in a very fantastic fashion that no one else have any knowledge whatsoever about that but him, then we should bow down to him in worship and submit ourselves to him. Or else, if you have a different claim, هَاتُوا burhanakum إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ Present your proof if you're telling the truth. Brothers and sisters, let's take a short break and inshallah we'll resume uh, afterwards. So stay tuned. Ramadan, Ramadan. Don't miss Ramadan's pause for this Ramadan from Sunday to Thursday, one hour before Ask Hada, that's 1 o'clock GMT and 4 o'clock Mecca time. With me, your favorite host, Malik, only on Huddy TV. Come join us and have your say. Let's talk about our way. Remember, you are not alone. Huda is the light in your home. Ramadan, Ramadan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And we'll come back. Uh, in this segment, inshallah, we'll tackle a few verses of Surah Al-Qasas, the second chapter. It's chapter number 28, the second chapter in the 20th uh, part. Uh, the verse we'll be discussing first is, uh, the verse is talking about the Pharaoh, Pharaoh. 
فرعون موسى In verse number 38 وقال فرعون يا أيها الملء ما علمت لكم من إله غير سبحان الله We were talking about those rhetorical questions which Allah presented in Surah Al-Nam and the proofs after proofs after proofs that he's providing and he says قل هاتوا برهنكم إن كنتم صادقين If you have something else to say bring your proof Now the Pharaoh is coming to bring his fake proof He said ما علمت لكم من إله غير He said to his people to the elite that I never knew that you have other God other than me Since I was born, I'm your God. <laughs> and in his statement, he's proven that he's not God. Because how long have you been there? Since when you figured out that you are a God? Since you grew up? Since you were born? What about before that? They have no God? And when you sleep, what happens? <laughs> when you go to sleep, when you have diarrhea, who takes care of the creation? Who runs the affair of the world? This, just to show how foolish those who worship humans or objects, or angels, or anything other than Allah the Allah. sustainer, the creator and the sustainer. So he says, Ya ayuhal malu, ma alimtu lakum min ilahin ghayri. I did not know any other God for you other than me. And uh, he dives deep and deep in his claim and in his arrogance, and he takes the responsibility of fighting against Moses' God. He says, Sheikh Ibrahim, فأوقد لي يا هامان على الطين فاجعل لي صرحا لعلي أطلع إلى إله إله موسى وإني لا أظنه من الكاذبين. Please. He proves to himself and to others that he is nothing but an ignorant person because he he is low and he wants to go high and he is saying for him to see the God of Musa عليه السلام and that shows that he is such a low state that he wants to go higher. So he orders uh, Harun, uh, he orders uh, Haman, his deputy, his, uh, his deputy, to build uh, a, tower. a tower for him so that he can look, you know, and he's saying so that he can go up and fight Moses God and right. uh, kill God and come back. He can jump for two meters high. And that's, uh, I mean, the ignorance of Pharaoh was very clear, but the amazing thing is, we can sit and talk about it and we see how ridiculous it is. But the amazing part is the followers of Pharaoh at his time were fooled by him. That means, human, that means as, and the human beings are the same human beings by the way it's not because they were thousands of years ago no. it's the same human being mm. that means with the disbelief with the sins the distortion of one's mind is so easy for a person to be distorted mm. and you'd say how can a person be like this and believe in such a belief in the time that we live in now you find people worshipping cockroaches for example this is existing and on rats. the face of it. And yes, rats. there are temples right. where and, people worship rats. And, and the same thing when people see Muslims. And for an, only, uh, an only one that became a Muslim recently, and you'd say, Muslims and they're drinking wine, for example? How can they do that when they know that this is something haram? Mm. There's such an amazing thing in the hearts of the human beings that is in the control of Allah subhanahu The fatwa, the no. pure nature, the essence of uh, no. the, the, the human being, which was right. created in the pure right. nature, then they altered it. Uh, talking about how foolish are the followers of such people they see him a human being like us and when he gets sick they rush to get him a doctor mm. and uh, he, they see him lying mm. down on bed it's and he's sick and he needs help and they still worship him these right. are uh, foolish uh, people uh, we have that nowadays you have somebody saying that the day of judgment a month ago and then the uh, day you comes. heard what happened to him right. <laughs> he got he, a stroke right and the, the amazing thing is you have he has followers how can people have this set of mind? I was thinking about this when the day passed by and nothing happened. Then he came up with another and said, well, I was um, mistaken in the calculation. It's actually <laughs> a month from now or in December or whatever. And his followers are still right. uh, constantly believing in him. But the case with the sorcerers were different. Right. Because they were foolish, yes. They had been oppressed, perhaps. They were promised, yes, for sure. إِنَّ لَنَا لَأَجْرًا إِنْ كُنَّا نَحْنُ الْغَالِبِينَ He said, certainly, and you'll be made very near to me. So the, the Pharaoh uh, used the stick and the carrot with them. But at the crucial time when they threw their sticks to frighten everybody, their fake sticks, and it made seem to people as snakes, then Musa was assured by Allah 
and he cast his gun and it turned into a real humongous snake which devoured and engulfed oh. all the 70,000 sticks فَأُلْقِيَ السَّحَرَةُ سَاجِدِينَ Immediate response. Immediate response. They all fell down in prostration. By the way, they did not know much about Musa's God, but they said, this guy is not lying. فَأُلْقِيَ السَّحَرَةُ سَاجِدِينَ قَالُوا آمَنَّا بِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Who is he? They said, we believe in the Lord of everything that exists. Who is he? All what they know about him is, Rabbi Musa, wa Harun, he's the Lord of Moses and Aaron, his brother, peace be upon them. So uh, they were saved. And their certainty and their faith was full of certainty, even though they, would, they were only one minute old of Iman. When the Pharaoh came to threaten them that I'm going to torture you, cut your hands and feet from cross, and I'm going to crucify you, he said, do as you wish. Then we have believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People are amazed why Muslims are so much attached to their religion and they take it personal. They think when they make a movie of Muhammad blasphemy, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when they criticize the Quran, yeah. Muslims should not feel bad. They say, we will do the same thing to our Prophet, man. Oh. We burn our Bible. We put a stack of the Bibles in order to step on them to reach something. Don't take it personal. They don't know. When the sorcerers accepted faith and became believers, in no time when the Pharaoh threatened that he's going to kill them and torture them before death, they said, we're more than willing. Right. We're more than willing. That's the effect of the faith in the hearts of the believers. The faith the does effect. wonders. Right. Because now we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right. So you have, you've been provided with the support Allah. Uh, from uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly. So and I, mean, I, I want to add on this, that uh, the people who are around Fir'aun, uh, the Iliad of Fir'aun, uh, are the first ones to know that Fir'aun is a liar. The first one, because uh, once you are close to someone who's a dictator, someone mm. who's, uh, who has this uh, description, you will know from yourself that he's a liar. But however, probably he's serving your interests, and that's why you're believing in him, mm. and you are approving what he's saying. And that's what the Quran said, فَاسْتَخَفَّ قَوْمَهُ فَأَطَاعُهُ He fooled his uh, nation, or his people, and they follow, they, they obey them. In no canu fasiqi, they <laughs> were <laughs> transgressing and they were uh, wrongdoing. Mm. So it is because uh, they, they, they were not like, like only uh, fooled. <laughs> they it's themselves as well to accept this uh, wrong. Well, we can say mm. uh, there were different people. People who followed him because they were fooled. Mm -hmm. people who believe that he may be telling the truth because they were born and they lived during his era and they thought this is our God because he takes uh, all the boys from the children of Israel and he kills them so they think that somebody has this uh, such power must be God some were ignorant some were fool some were beneficiaries mm -hmm. were getting paid and some were arrogant the problem is with those who have been acknowledged with the fact and they still show resentment. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the following verse number 39, When they showed arrogance, and they thought that they would not be returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَأَخَذْنَاهُ وَجُنُودَهُ فَنَبَذْنَاهُمْ فِي الْيَمْ فَانْظُرْ كَيْفَ كَانَ عَاقِبَةُ الظَّالِمِينَ What was their fate? Him and his horse, the entire army. You know, when, uh, when uh, Musa alayhi salam uh, fled with Bani Israel, by the time the Pharaoh was informed, he led his army to chase Musa and the Israelites. By the time Musa alayhi salam reached to the sea, the first of his people were by the sea. And their end were almost close to the beginning of the army of the Pharaoh. So they said to Musa alayhi salam, Inna lamudrakun. Certainly they swore that we will be caught. This is it. You destroyed us. With full certainty, Musa salam says, Nay. Kalla. That will never happen. Allah will never disappoint us. Will never Let give up on us. Kalla inna ma'ya rabbi sayhdi. My Lord is with me. He shall guide me. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders him to strike the sea and they were saved. He is a very crucial moment for the Pharaoh because he was certain 
at least for him, he was certain 100% that Musa السلام, is a true prophet. He was sure. But he showed arrogance and he dealt with him from this uh, uh, perspective. So when Musa السلام, struck the sea and they walked in the middle of the water, on a road in the middle of the water, he knew that Musa could have an access to that because God is able to do all things because of the nine other miracles that he has seen and experienced before. Mm-hmm. And that's why the Pharaoh decided not to follow Musa. He said, he's not going to follow Musa. It could be a trap. He does not have an access to keep this dry road in the middle of the sea. But it was not his choice. He fooled his people once again and said, I did that. I ordered the sea to split so that when they all get into the sea, I will order to engulf them. It was Jibreel alayhi salam who led his horse and according his followers, the horse, the foolish of the Pharaoh, they followed him as well. And they were all in the middle of the water. They were engulfed and they were drowned. That is the punishment of the dunya. And in the hereafter, there is a severe torment that is awaiting for them eternally. وَالْعِيَاذُ بِاللَّهِ Shaykh Ibrahim, what is the meaning of وَجَعَنَّاهُمْ أَئِمَّةً يَدْعُونَ إِلَى النَّارِ وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ لَا يُنصَرُونَ Verse number 41. It means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the meaning of which that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the Pharaoh, uh, the Pharaohs as leaders hmm. for people to come. Uh, and on the Day of Judgment they would never be victorious. And the mean of, meaning of this, as it's mentioned in some of the traditions, that for every nation there is a Pharaoh. The, the character of Fir'aun is repeating. And that's why the story of Fir'aun is mentioned in the Quran, for us to benefit. Because the same attitude, the same character, with different names, with different environments, is repeating itself in the history of mankind, for people to learn and to take lessons. And as a matter of fact, in each and every one of us, we have this tendency to be arrogant. And if people are left with power and strength, and followers and so on, they can reach what Fir'aun reached with the arrogance. <laughs> the, the human being transgresses. Mm. So that's why we have to uh, oppress this arrogance in ourselves. Otherwise, it's just Fir'aun, he had made easy for him to be the way he was. Many people, if they would have the means that Fir'aun had, they would follow the same path. So he's leaders for those who, meaning that he would teach, people would take from him and they would follow him. I believe in today's world, as you just mentioned, that uh, many people, have they have access to what they have, mm-hmm. they would have behaved the same. Right. In our today's world, uh, the rulers of some countries, the, those dictators, they know that they were born and certainly they will die and they get sick and they visit the physicians or actually they bring the hospital to, <laughs> to their palaces to take care of them. Right. But for some reason, they thought that they're going to last. Mm-hmm. And they behave like the Pharaoh. If not by claiming that, Ana rabbukum al-a'la, but their actions prove that through oppressing others with no mercy whatsoever, mm. fearing not that one day they will return unto Allah uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the sunnah of Allah that the more the person is arrogant in his status as being a king or whatever, mm. the more humiliation he would be if he is removed. Subhanallah. How humili- humiliated Pharaoh was and how the same thing Namrud. is repeated. Right. And today is dictators, right. subhanAllah. Right. Well, brothers and sisters, by that we came to the end of the second segment. Inshallah, we'll take a short break and we'll continue after the world. Stay tuned. Ramadan, Ramadan. How to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from head to toe? This is a valid question. Yes, it is. Can we implement that in our life? Of course we can. This religion of Islam is such a comprehensive way of life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us in the Quran and showed us in the Quran how to worship him. He said, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Did not create the jinn or the mankind except for one purpose and that is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. That means there is no exception. That means this perfect way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us with. The wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gave us hands, hearts, eyes, ears, and so on. To establish the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with its comprehensive meaning, 
using all these different parts of our body. How can we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with our eyes, with our ears, with our hands, legs, private parts? This is what we would do inshallah ta'ala in this series. So join us and we need to learn, we need to be sincere and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for us and to make us among the sincere slaves those who establish the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the moon. قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to the last segment of tonight's program. Um, verse number 50, Sheikh Saeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the verse by saying, فَإِن لَمْ يَسْتَجِيبُوا لَكَ فَعْلَمْ أَنَّمَا يَتَّبِعُونَ أَهْوَأَهُ وَمَنْ أَضَلُّ مِمَّنْ اتَّبَعَ هَوَاهُ بِغَيْرِ هُدًا مِّنَ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَهْدِ الْقَوْمَ الظَّالِمِينَ If they do not respond to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then know that they are just following their Desire. desires, their whim. Despite the fact that they know the truth, and you're not, you, they know that you're telling the truth. And who is more astray than one who follows his hawa without guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Verily, Allah guides, not the wrongdoers. Please. Jazakallah khachah Muhammad subhanallah. My comment on this verse that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is mentioned as well in the Quran, that anyone who follows his desire, and anyone who follows his lusts or his whims, that Allah Ta'ala will not make will not uh, make his affairs right. All of his affairs will be lost. Hmm. And he will he won't be able to uh, get them right. Allah Ta'ala in the Quran said uh, من أغفلنا قلبه عن ذكرنا. And don't follow that one the one whom we sealed his heart from our, our remembrance. No. Or we cause his heart to be heedless of our remembrance. And he followed his desire. وَكَانَ أَمْرُهُ فُرُطَى And his affair was, was lost. Uh, and that, that shows that anyone who, who follows his desire, he, 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 won't, he won't have success in this life or in the hereafter. Uh, at the same time, what did they say afterwards? After this verse, Shaykh Muhammad, they... they, they, they وَمَنْ أَضَلُّ مِمَّنِ اتَّبَعَ هَوَاهُ بِغَيْرِ هُدًا مِّنَ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَهْدِ الْقَوْمَ الظَّالِمِينَ الله أكبر. Uh, beside Allah's uh, guidance, if someone followed his desire, followed his, his lust, subhanAllah ta'ala, he, is, he is, is rejecting uh, that which will guide him towards the straight path and towards the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course he's choosing an option that which, which, which is... Uh, and there is a, a straight and straightforward and a clear warning mm -hmm. against following one's inner desire. Mm -hmm. uh, and in another verse, it addresses the fact as it can reach to the extent that a person end up worshipping his own desire. أَفَرَأَيْتَ مَنِ اتَّخَذَ إِلَاهَهُ هَوَا Once you do that, Allah Ta'ala will misguide him mm. uh, and uh, will seal his heart. وَأَبَلَّهُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ خَتَمَ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِهِ His heart will be sealed. وَجَعَلَ عَلَىٰ بَصِرِ غِشَانِهِ He will be able to see as well the, 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 the right path. That, so, that, that's a problem because uh, the ayah is talking basically about people who know the truth, but they choose not to follow it knowingly. Uh, for instance, Abu Jahl once was asked, do you have any problem with Muhammad? He said, no, not at all. Do you think that he's telling the truth? Yes, of course he is. Surah Al-An'am, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assured the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa that they are not blind him. Mm. قَدْ نَعْلَمُ إِنَّهُ لَا يَحْزُنُكَ الَّذِي يَقُولُونَ فَإِنَّهُمْ لَا يُكَذِّبُونَكَ They don't have a problem with you. They do not accuse you personally. وَلَكِنَّ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا وَلَكِنَّ الظَّالِمِينَ بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ يَجْحَدُونَ They have a problem with the verses of Allah, with believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, Abu Jahl said, well, his tribe, and Abdi Manaf, the tribe of the Prophet وسلم, were always in a state of competition. Competition with regards to honoring the pilgrims, feeding them, giving them uh, free water, and so on. Until all of a sudden, we were even in the race, in the competition. Then all of a sudden, 
These guys said, well, we have a prophet from amongst us. So they beat us. How are we supposed to bring a prophet <laughs> like them? <laughs> we can't. So the solution is, we have to take him down. We have to discredit him. Hmm. So discrediting Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu or these attempts to discredit Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu it was not because they have doubt that he was not uh, he, he was not telling the truth or this is not the Quran. It was a matter of personal ego and arrogance. Musaylima al kathab Musaylima the liar. He came along with his people to take the pledge of allegiance and hmm. accept Islam. But when he saw how the companions Hey, did you respect to the Prophet Sallallahu and you surrounded with those people? He envied him and he offered him, me and my people will accept Islam if you make it 50-50. Oh. What do you mean? Like, you mean you make me uh, your partner. But this is not a kingdom. This is not a kingdom, no presidency. This is a prophethood. You have to be appointed by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He ended up refusing to accept Islam. Then... He claimed the prophethood. Huh. Amr ibn al-As, may Allah be pleased with him, uh, visited al-Yamama and met with Musaylima al-Kazab. And uh, Musaylima asked him, Ya Amr, uh, has your guy, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa been receiving any new revelations? He said, yes. As a matter of fact, he just received a wonderful chapter. Wonderful verses because they were pure Arab and they really appreciated the word of Quran even though they disagreed with it. Oh. He said, what is it? He said, inna al insana lafi khus, the, 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 the surah, the chapter. Oh. He said, yeah, 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 you know what? I just received a similar surah to it. Then he started making up, ya wabar, ya wabar, innama anta uthunani, etc. Oh. So Hamra ibn al-As looks at him in the eyes and said, O oh, Musaylima, by Allah, you know that, I know that, you know that you're a liar. <laughs> Play another game. You know that you're a liar and you know for sure I know that you're a liar. So then you knew the truth and you know who was lying and who was telling the truth. That's why our entire deen is very distinct from any other religion of the current religions with the fact that this deen has been protected and preserved through strictly following the guidance of the Qur'an and the Sunnah and nothing stemming of our hawa, no. nothing stemming of our desire. No. Uh, Sheikh uh, Ibrahim, verse number 56, and perhaps you can give us uh, some background as why this verse was revealed and so on. إِنَّكَ لَا تَهْدِي مَنْ أَحْبَكْتُ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ Hmm. Uh, the verse roughly means that it's not you, O Muhammad hmm. that guides whoever you love or you like. It's hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one that guides whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills. Hmm. And that shows the second type of guidance because guidance is of two types. Hmm. The guidance that it's to all mankind which is presented in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu when everything is made clear Al -irshad. Al -irshad. Mm -hmm. and then the second type which is only in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tawfiq for Success. a person to be guided to embrace the truth mm -hmm. and that's nobody owns this whatsoever except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Prophet sallallahu was so much eager for his beloved uncle the one that protected him mm -hmm. for him to be guided to embrace the religion of Islam he would protect him uh, he knew the truth and the Prophet ﷺ cared for him so much. Mm. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out and of his wisdom. And he cared for the Prophet so And he much. cared for the Prophet And he supported the Ummah right. a lot. Right. The year on which he died is known as the year of sorrow right. and sadness. Right. And that by itself is a, a lesson to the Ummah of the Prophet ﷺ. He did not worry about Abu Lahab. He right. was his uncle as well. Right. Go to hell. Right. But not right. Abu Talib. Right. Abu Talib was supporting him so much. Now he is standing next to him. Next to his head. Say that. Like, like, he said one word. I remember he said. Um, uh, he knew that uh, the religion of Muhammad sallam is the best way. No. He, he said, said, I wish I can please Abiyah. your heart. No. Uh, Abiyah, he praised him so much. Uh, Abu, Abu, no. Abu, Abu Talib. Abu Talib used to praise him so much. Ali is far uh, May Allah uh, And he said Ali to Quraysh, the whole Quraysh, mm. uh, he told them. Um, 
that uh, if you come uh, la, la, قد, uh, if you come all of you together with all of you soldiers with all of you fighters uh, we won't give you Muhammad then we we're not going to give you Muhammad we're going to uh, we وينهض قوم في الحديد إليكم ونهوض الرواية نهوض الرواية تحت ذات الصلاة صلي أن we not gonna leave you if you gonna touch him list that we gonna jump on you and kill you it is enough to know that Abu Talib entered into this huge prison with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم for three years and he was not Muslim for three years in شعب أبي طالب so with this full support and protection that he provided to the Prophet with his wealth, with his uh, family lineage, with his tribe. And then he is slipping out of his hand. And this is not just somebody who's dying. This is a very dear person who, 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 who really what a great loss. And he's going to fire. This is not just paying a trip to a nar where you'll be purified and uh, blamed and come back to heaven. No. He knows that if you die in this state of disbelief Go if you do not utter it and that gives another lesson which is even if the person thinks that I believe that you're right you guys may be right but he refuses to utter because al iman consists of two mm. parts mm. saying in action and the saying is the saying of the heart and the saying of the tongue and the action is the action of the heart the tongue and the limbs the entire body and its parts should be involved in presenting the fact of the Iman. Yeah. It is not sufficient to say, uh, we fast, he fasts with us, or he prays with us, mm -hmm. but sometimes he also goes to the church, or he does this and this and that. No, it's either you entirely submit yourself to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala via action and saying, Ya ayuha ladina amanu khulu fi silmi kafah. Submit unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fully, not just partially. Well, so, it's very important also for the viewers to to see this very clearly that we we need to see that the the guidance is all in the hands of Allah subhanahu yeah, wa ta'ala it should be sought from him right and that's the most important need in our life is guidance and that's why we say ihdina salat al-mustaqim the fact is there are so many smart people on the face of earth and they're not guided they're not guided it's not by what you think it's it really is weird when you see somebody right. who's very intelligent or a biochemist and he he worships a cow right and that's why we, are, we have to be in that state of need to be guided and the guidance is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, wasn't it Prophet uh, Shu'aib, peace be upon him, in mm. Surah Hud who said, وَمَا تَوْفِيقِ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلْتُ وَإِلَيْهِ أُنِيب My success in any achievement, including being rightly guided, وَمَا تَوْفِيقِ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ is only with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In him, on him I trust, uh, I, uh, uh, in him I put my trust, oh, and unto him I return back with repentance. No. Now, uh, this is really amazing. Okay, um, we only have a couple of minutes left, and I would like to tackle uh, the beginning of Surah Al Ankabut, uh, oh. Sheikh Said. Oh, the second verse is talking about a fact, mm. inevitable fact, which is that we have to be exposed to tests and trials. And how should we react towards these tests and trials? أحسب الناس أن يتركوا أن يقولوا آمنا وهم لا يفتنون ولقد فتن الذين من قبلهم. That is the third verse. فلا يعلمن الله الذين صدقوا ولا يعلمن الكاذبين. سبحان الله. It is a it is a very meaningful verse, and it gives us sometimes an answer to the question that why Allah Taala put us sometimes. And the trials and tribulations mm. in this world. Uh, Allah Taala in the Quran mentioned in more than one verse that uh, the reason behind trial and tribulation is that for us to return back to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. وَبَلَوْنَاهُمْ بِالْحَسَنَاتِ وَالسَّيِّئَاتِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجِعُونَ And we try them with that which is good and that which is bad, so that they may return back to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. فَلَوْنَا إِذْ جَاءَهُمْ بَأْسُنَا تَبَرَّعُوا had if had if they when our trials or our tribulation came unto them have been humbled uh, and returned back to us <laughs> the heart was hard was hard subhanallah <laughs> so one of the uh, one of the uh, wisdom behind tribulation uh, is that we return back to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala another wisdom is which is in this verse 
but that the, the wisdom may work with certain people mm -hmm. and may not exactly exactly uh, the second w the second purpose behind uh, tribulation and purification trials on earth, of course uh, purification this one is one of the purposes one of the uh, reasons uh, it is as well to distinguish between the the the, the wicked and the rights ما كان الله ليذر المؤمنين على ما أنتم أرتاعوا ونقول لي بالليفز on their current status until he distinguishes between the believe between the right and the righteous and between the wicked ones and it is worth of mentioning here that the meaning of فلا يعلمن الله الذين صدقوا ولا يعلمن الكذبين it is not something that Allah will find out no no at all at all Allah knows but it is for us to prove to us these guys fail to know who are who are with the believers who are with us inshallah may Allah make us from the believers and who is from the wicked ones so we will know the two parties it's going to be clear otherwise everyone will claim that he's a believer. Yeah. Everyone can claim that he's would be with that part of the Brothers and sisters, we covered as much as we can in this very short time the 20th part. I mean, some verses of the 20th part of the Quran remains for us the last 10 nights of Ramadan. We have to seize this opportunity. It could be the last. The Prophet, وسلم, whenever the last 10 nights of Ramadan would approach, would fasten his waist belt. That's a metaphor which means that. He intends to do a harder labor and work. He would stand up all night in prayer. Sometimes he would rest during the first and the second, one third and th second third of Ramadan. But in the last one third, he would be constantly praying to Hajjud and Qiyam until Fajr. And not only that, and he would awaken his family. We want to live the next ten nights entirely in the company of the Quran, in the prayer, in the recitation. And in halaq al-dhikr, making istighfar, making dua, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from all of us, pardon us and forgive us our sins, and cause us to die in a state of Islam, and admit us into his mercy and paradise. By the end, I would like to thank my dear guest, Sheikh Ibrahim Zidan, Sheikh Saeed al-Qadi. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, brothers and sisters. تقبل الله منا منكم الله كبول خير صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أنسيتم مرون إن شاء الله. Ramadan, Ramadan, Ramadan May your Ramadan nights be blessed with welfare and forgiveness May your Ramadan nights be blessed with welfare and forgiveness May your Ramadan nights be blessed with welfare and forgiveness May your Ramadan nights be blessed with welfare and forgiveness Ramadan Ramadan, Ramadan, Ramadan.